Hey! Oh, Rocket Chick Roger! Hello there! Hey, let's go to Puerto Viejo. I'm going to go to Soka and see Mark Bradbury and talk to Irina. I'm starting out here in my parking garage. Somebody said, so, so is your routine, your, what you do. So here's the start of what I do today. I'm going to record as much of it as I can from my GoPro here, hanging in the little window of my car. Open the gate. Got a full tank of gas. I think I'm going to reset my odometer and see. I'm gonna, I've got a different route. To, we're going to uh, Puerto Viejo without having to go through Monte Cristi. And I was reset my odometer. The last time, the way it normally goes, is 60 miles round trip. And let me get this radio off. 60 miles round trip. And I found a better way to go. It's a little bit, maybe a little bit out of the way. And um, we'll see how many, exactly how many miles it is. Uh, why didn't the gate open all the way? I have a little remote that I can use to open the gate and close it. There we go. And so, wind off. I've already had my breakfast. I'm not going to Delsing Formosa this morning. I guess I better turn the AC on. It's a little bit warm. It's been warm here the last couple of days. Warmer than usual. Of course, I argue with Stella because Stella says, Oh, it's El Nino, El Nino. And I don't know if it is or isn't. But I've had to turn my air conditioner on for two days in a row. It's been off for a while now because it's been it's been cooling off and I can tell by just by looking at my electric bill my electric bill for this month was forty seven dollars last month it was eighty something dollars the month before that it was a little over a hundred dollars or I think actually it was right at a hundred dollars and now it's forty seven dollars that's good last January my electric bill was twenty seven dollars January of this year so this is the amount of con that I'm going down mall I'm just now going by the mall and first got to stop in line so I'm gonna try to record as much of this as I can for this trip some of this is just open road you know Puerto Viejo is you ask a taxi driver or anybody else how far is it from Monta and everybody says it's like 45 minutes it's just up the road really I mean it's kind of like going from Austin to San Marcos Austin Texas to San Marcos Texas for those of you that from that area you're from California is like going from uh, San Diego to Orange County. Let's say to John Wayne Airport. Same kind of, but same distance, same time. Of course, most of it is, you know, traffic getting out of Monta, getting in Puerto Viejo. There's a bypass that goes around the main city, kind of like a loop. And that's where Soka is located. A lot of the medical facilities are out there on that bypass. You'll see when we get there. And 
so that makes it a little bit easier to deal with. The big spray this thing out. The big problem with going to Puerto Viejo from Monte is that the traditional route, if you follow the maps, the traditional route that takes you through Monte Cristi. What a hell hole that place is as far as driving. There's the worst driving. It's a two lane road on both sides of the road. And there's always people parked on the side. There's always people wanting to turn. There's no left turn lanes. There's it's just the most horrible road traffic management system you can imagine for a little town. And the only way to really deal with it is that you just get in line and go with the flow. You just coast along. If you try to get in a hurry and get ahead of people, you're going to lose. Fortunately, I've been able to go there and not have a wreck or get hit, but boy, I've had some close calls. Stella and I were coming back one time, and I thought a bus was going to run us right off the road. That's that's the problem with driving through there, the, all the buses, and then, of course, the taxis. As you can imagine, you can see here, look at all the taxis. I think somebody told me there are like 3,000 taxis in Monta. You gotta be kidding me. 3,000 in a city of what 350,000, 300,000 people. And here I am, I'm talking, not paying attention to what I'm doing. And I need to be over to the right. I got it. so the route that I take here, I'll, show, I'll draw this out on the map and show you. I'll just highlight it on the map and put it somewhere in this video and show you the actual route. Now watch this guy, he's going to, okay, I thought I'm sure he's just going to come right on over. I'll show you the exact route I took, but basically what I'm doing is I'm going to see Monta runs, the beach is to the north, so Monta runs east and west, the city itself, east and west, and Puerto Viejo is east of Monta. And, and I swear to God, I'm going to keep my cool. I'm going to keep my cool here. This car right here in front of me, just, you know, just no turn signal, no nothing. Just, I had to put my brakes on to let him in because he wanted to be in front of me. So, me being the wonderfully nice person that I am I let him go and I didn't I didn't flip him off how about that so there goes the motorcyclists that's what they make their own traffic rules here okay so no more no bitching about traffic but anyway forgot where I was at I was talking about oh so Monta runs kind of east and west and so Puerto Viejo is east of Monta and here look Look here on the map, see, right here. And the way I'm going to get to the east side of Monta is I basically take the Malacan. I go east of the city by the fish market, the bus terminal, the airport. And then what I've been doing in the past is there's a there's a circle out there, and I take take it to the right, and I end up going through Monte Cristi, and then on up to Puerto Viejo. This way, the way I'm going now, is I go, I bypass Monte Cristi, and I go a little bit further east, because there is there is two ways to Puerto Viejo. You can go all the way east on this road. It's here is Monte Cristi. And so there goes the kid on a motorcycle and the cop, no, sounds so well, the cop's just going to go ahead and go in the medium. <laughs> but anyway, there's, he just, there he was behind his kid on the motorcycle with no helmet on, driving in the center lane, which is a caution lane, not a driving lane. The cop was right behind him and then the cop just goes on and that's the way it works here. Of course, for those of you that don't know, Policia 
here, they don't do traffic, okay? They don't do traffic unless there's like a crime that's involved, you know? It's the transit police. Uh, well, I was gonna say, I'm not gonna say that. The transit police, they're the ones that basically are monitoring and controlling traffic. And it's a big freaking joke. They carry no weapons with them. They just carry a big ego with them. And that's it. They think they are, uh, well, okay, I'm, I'm, I'll stop there. So there I'm going by the fish market right now. There are a lot of people there today. And of course there on the left is the boat yard. But anyway, so I'm gonna go on pass. I'll do the bypass. It may be a couple miles further, but you know what? It's, it's, it's a few less gray hairs for me. I don't have to worry. Uh, I don't have to be stressed over traffic. Because when you drive through Monte Cristo, that's, it's all about stress. So I did this video yesterday where on my porch and believe it or not folks that's kind of hard to do because it's a lighting problem you know it's a photography lighting problem and if i if i take my camera out on the porch and i try to do a video of me on the porch with the ocean in the background the camera sees the brilliant ambient light from the background and wants to expose for that so I have to just kind of let the camera do it, and which makes me dark because I'm in the foreground. So I have to compensate for that by lighting up me. <clears throat> well, I don't, I don't have enough light really to power up me. So I had to do what I had to do is pick a time of the day when there's not that much light, like the golden hour. For those of you that know about photography, you're familiar with the golden hour. <clears throat> so. I'm going to continue to do that as much as I can. And uh, give you a little bit better view. Plus, I'm going to try, I'm going to put some effort into getting actually away from the apartment to do my videos. And I'm going to put a notice out on Facebook when I get back this afternoon asking for volunteers that want to be interviewed. And uh, I want to get some Canadians, there's a lot of them here. I want to get, have some interviews with some Canadians because the rules are a lot different for the Canadians than they are for the U.S. expats. Now, everything's different for the Canadians. I, I, I can't believe some of the crap you people have to go through to get money down here, to get your visa. Not to mention the fact that you lose so much money because of the conversion, the dollar you lose. I feel for you. So I want to find a couple of Canadian experts and talk to them about stuff like that. And give everybody what they're asking for. And somebody's pinging me. Somebody. Of course, I try not to pay much attention to my phone while I'm driving. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. A lot of cars around here going by the transit station oh well that's arena so I'm going up to see Mark Bradbury I talked to Dr. Garcia yesterday about Mark Bradbury's situation um, the sad news about his situation is that he's not uh, getting any better in terms of being able to breathe on his own and he's and basically the soca is they're kind of saying well they're done with him and there's not a whole lot more they can do for him and they're basically telling Irina that she needs to take him home and the bad thing about that is that he'd have to have a respirator and you can't go and buy respirators or rent them here like you can in the United States. 
uh, Dr. Garcia told me that a respirator here would cost him like $5,000. Mark's breathing on one lung and he has a tracheotomy. And he's still got other issues. He still needs a triple bypass. All kinds of stuff going on with him. So, I, and I've mentioned a couple of times in previous videos that there is no hospice here. Well, I found out that that's not necessarily true. There is, there's, Dr. Garcia told me yesterday that there's a couple of them here. It's not the hospice organization like we have in the United States. There are facilities where people basically go to die. She told me just point blank right to my face that knowing what my expectations are, she told me that I would not like the facility, which is kind of sad, you know. I can just imagine, after seeing what I see up in Soka, which by the way, in case you haven't figured it out, if I had cancer, I think I'd rather die than be in Soka. Not just, just no way, but of course, fortunately for me, I had the resources where if I had a, such a bad illness like that, I would just go back to the States and have it taken care of there. But that's me, okay? Fortunately, Mark couldn't do that, so he's kind of stuck with it. But anyway, I'm going there to see if I can talk uh, Arena into going to the hospital administrator and asking for a referral and try to get him through IESS into one of these facilities where he can be taken care of. There's no way he can go home. At least I don't think there is. Uh, so that's what, that's, that's my mission for today. And hopefully to see Mark and maybe get a smile or two out of him. I feel so bad for him. It's taken a tremendous toll on me. And I thank God I've got pretty good health. Pretty good health. Thank God I, I have enough health. God, these people are so impatient. They just absolutely cannot stand to be stuck behind somebody. Normally I turn right here and go to Monte Cristi. This is, now I'm on what, I, what I'm calling the bypass. I don't know what kind of way that is, but here it is in the back. Here's where I just came through. Just going to go a ways down here and then take a right. Go past the power plant. Be on my way. It's a crappy looking road. No stripes. No shoulder. No nothing. I mean, it's. This is the way it's done here. I know that a lot of people are picking up on my attitude about how I feel about living here. Somebody wrote to me yesterday and asked me that had I done an exploratory trip, uh, would I still be here? And I just said, no, I wouldn't be. I believe that if I had done an actual exploratory trip to Monta, uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't be here today. But, you know, I met somebody 
and fell in love and now I'm kind of stuck here because of her. I, I, I do plan to leave. I mean, there's no secret. Uh, but I just don't know where I'm going to go yet. I can't go back home yet. But I, I guess maybe I should do another, a second Brutal Truth video and explain why, exactly why and what it is that I don't like about living in Monta. Because I, it, it's going to be a long video because I, there's a lot that I just absolutely hate about living here. I try, try, try to adapt and make myself like it. And I'm just, I'm failing miserably. Failing miserably. So here's, here on the map is where I'm at here. This is my, my pass. And it's another road, highway, whatever you call this. I don't know what the hell this is. No stripes, no, it's not, it's barely paved. It's got a speed limit of 60 kilometers per hour. By the way, speaking of speeding and speed limits, uh, a judge somewhere here in Ecuador last week outlawed the radar, photo radar tickets. So, now I don't have to worry about those. I don't know how long it's going to last, but for now, the photo radar tickets have been banned, outlawed. Uh, well, let's see what I got here. Slow truck passing another slow truck. But this is better than going through Monte Cristo, I'm telling you folks. I, I'm not doing Monte Cristo anymore. Does it look like I'm going fast? Come on, buddy. I've discovered that people drift all over the road. I mean, they just, they, I mean, there's barely some stripes here. Here, They're, they were probably painted 20 years ago. Uh, they, People drift and I, well what I discovered that if you flash your lights I mean most people will notice it and they'll move over but man there are some people that just absolutely put blinders on and they just look straight ahead and they don't pay any attention to what's going on around them whatsoever I stopped the video for a couple of minutes because I'm just on. There's well, there's nothing to see. All right. And now I'm coming up on the, the intersection where this the the cut of this this road that I'm on right here goes all the way to Guayaquil. Because the next stop is Ipiapa, then on up. Going up toward Waikil, three hours later here in Waikil. That's you can see the church steeple over there, at Monte Cristo. That's Monte Cristo at the base of the little mountain there. I can take this cut off here and go right on into town. But of course, now I don't have to go that way. I'm gonna bypass all of that. My life is good today because I didn't have to drive through Monte Cristo.
I, I think I, I mentioned in yesterday's video about Daniel o, Oboa, o, Oboa, the new president, president for 17 months. The, uh, it seems that his top priority is going to be to do something about crime. I don't know what he's going to do because he's not going to have any control over the cartel. But God bless him. I hope he, hope he has success. There's so many things that need to be fixed in this country. I'm no political advisor. I'm no political expert. But, so here's here's the end of the bypass. So Puerto Rico to the left. Black Hill straight ahead, Monta back to the right. We have to drive right through uh, the Monte Cristi hellhole. But anyway, I hope he. I'm, I really wish this guy the best. I hope he is a successful president. Actually, I hope he's successful enough that he gets reelected for the next full term. I think it's a four-year term. Basically, right now, he's filling in for Lasso. But he has to also rebuild the assembly, so he's got a lot of work ahead of him. That's for sure. And I just pray that he gets to stay alive through it all. So now I'm on... Uh, I think this is actually called E35, like Echo 35. It's the road that goes to Puerto Viejo, and, and just in a few minutes, I'll be in Puerto Viejo. You see a lot of buses on this road. I don't get to use my cruise very often around here. I, I, I actually introduced the cruise control to Stella on one of our trips up here. She didn't understand what it was. I had to explain to her how it works. You can sure tell that they banned the, the photo radar systems now because everybody's like hauling ass. I think the speed limit for cars is like 80 kilometers per hour, I think. I'll tell you in just a minute, I'm sure. I'm doing about 84, 85 right now, kilometers per hour. They don't have the little conversion mapped out on the speedometer like they do in the States where you have miles per hour and then the next line is kilometers per hour. Okay, so it's actually it's 90, so I'm going slow. Well, there's another limit at 100. Now there's 70. I, hell, I don't know what it is. The best way to do is just go with the flow. Just go with the flow. I can't believe I'm actually, looks like I'm going to pass a bus. Hardly anybody passes these buses. These guys drive like I tell you what, you get in some of these buses and you're you're really taking a risk, in my opinion. This guy here is it's unbelievable. He's not going fast at all. There's a 2D distribution center right there, T U T I. You can see the little blue sign there with the yellow letters, 2D. That's, that's, somebody told me that that's owned and run by the cartel. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what I was told. It's a 
Tutti is kind of like a dollar store in the United States. They got bargain foods and you could get beer and liquor there, but the only bad thing about them is that you don't know week to week what they're gonna have. You can go in this week and get a whole case of Russian vodka for, oh, 35 bucks. I don't know about that. Maybe 50 or 60 dollars. It's pretty cheap. But try to go back next week and they may not have it. And they don't care. Okay, I'm going to pause the video for a little bit because there's really not much to see here. Well, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to keep it going. The camera gets awful warm. I'll keep it going as long as the camera will keep going. You got these little towns here and they got speed bumps in them. I have to slow down for those. And of course, you have to go watch people walking on the highway. They think nothing of it here. So here's speed bump number one. I think there's a second one down here. What's funny is they, they got signs up that show where the speed bumps are but they're not like warning you know speed bump ahead they well like there's not even one here for this one but usually they put the sign right at the speed bump a lot of sense that makes folks you know put it further down the road so we can know that it's ahead speed bump ahead god what's hard about that right That's the way to do it. This highway is a little bit better than what we came through there coming out of Monte. At least this one's got some sort of uh, resemblance of stripes so you can kind of know where the lanes are. Sort of, kind of like, pretty faint. At least something. Yeah, and this is a toll road, believe it or not, going into Port of Mediho, you'll see here in a minute. Costs 50 cents. So every day I come up here, it's a dollar a trip. Okay, so here, here's a sign here. Here, here's a sign. See the yellow sign with the little speed bump sign right there? So there's the sign, and at least that one is not right at the speed bump because here's the speed bump here and it's really not much of a speed bump either I probably wouldn't even have to slow down for it but you gotta slow down because there's people all over the place it's not a safe place these highways are not safe see like this guy right here just he, he can't even see who's if there's a car coming or anything like blindly walking out into the highway.
In case you're wondering, that truck right in front of me, that green truck, that's Serbian Traga. That's a kind of like the UPS of Ecuador. Serbian Traga goes all over Ecuador. You can get stuff sent from Monta to Cuenca or Quito for six or seven dollars, depending on what it is, how much it weighs. And that's that. I'm sure you are glad to know that. <laughs> so now I'm going down a pretty steep hill here. Headed to the toll booth. Once I hit the toll booth, then I feel like I'm in Puerto Viejo. I see here's a speed bump sign right there, but guess what? There's no speed bump. So I don't know what it's for. There's another speed bump sign right there. Oh, 200 meters. Yeah, so that one's for that speed bump that's right there. The Serbian Traga bump truck is about to go over. And it's not much of a speed bump either. It's good I did slow beat down. And let's see how I get my money. Where's the answer? Crisis, when do you? Top is probably a good place to get change. Throw a $20 bill up there, I guarantee you they're going to have change for it because everybody pays with quarters and fifty cent pieces. Okay, so there I paid my fifty cents to come into Puerto Viejo, and I'm on my way. I'm going to uh, turn off the recording for the next few minutes camera from getting too hot. Well, it's actually okay. I'm going to leave it on. Bienvenidos a Puerto Viejo. So, in Spanish, Viejo means old. And Puerto, like, I'm thinking that means port, but who knows? I mean, this is definitely not a port city. So, if anybody knows what Puerto Viejo means, Spanish, I'd be curious to know. I could look it up really easily myself, but you tell me. There's a motorcyclist up here, I don't know, probably too far away. The focal length on this GoPro is set for a wide angle, so it probably looks like a long ways away. But motorcyclist up ahead of me, for some reason he's driving. I'm recording this on my phone. I had to, my GoPro overheated and shut down. That's one thing I hate about this damn GoPro. I don't know why. I mean, I'm only recording at 1080p at 60 frames per second. And after about 20 minutes or so, it overheats and shuts down. Piece of shit. If anybody knows of a better system, I'm all ears. I'd be happy to hear what it is. So anyway, here I am driving down the road, holding up my cell phone. Man, I don't know whether it's, that's just like the third emergency vehicle I've seen going that way. Ambulances. There's four. Maybe they're having a parade. But anyway, here's the dash of my car in case you're interested. You want to see what a Chinese car looks like from inside? 
I'm going to do this as long as I can get away with it. Well, actually, I'm going to have to stop here because traffic has stopped. And I'm driving a stick, as you can tell. If I can do this without having a crash, a crash of dent. All the beggars. I love it when they bring our kids out here and use them to beg. Way to go, people. Okay, I'm gonna put the phone down. This is where I turn to go to the bypass to go around Port of Bay Hall. I wish I had somebody holding this phone for me. This is stupid that I'm doing this. Anyway, alright, I'm going to turn this off until I get to the hospital. So there is Soka Hospital. I don't know if I caught the sign. It's got a speed bump. Got to go through. Right there is the hospital. Right there is where I'm gonna park. And no, I guess I'm not. Looks like they're closed. So I'm up here at Soka Hospital. The cancer hospital in Puerto Viejo. And they're closed. They are closed. They close because of the weekends and holidays. And, but I was able to get in to see Mark with uh, permission from Irina. It's the first time I've ever been inside this hospital. There wasn't hardly anybody in there. But the bad thing about it is that there's no doctors in here. There was maybe one in all of the ICU. But anyway, so I'm heading back now, back to Monta. And I'll try to go back to the GoPro. All right, I'm back. I just uh, I just finished visiting Mark Bradbury. He's Soka Hospital, believe it or not, is closed. I, well, I just told you that. Sorry to be repeating myself, but anyway, how I'm old. Uh, Mark is in pretty. I mean, it seems like he's in pretty decent shape. They took the breathing tube off of him to, while I was there, two several times, and he's able to breathe on his own and I said take some deep breaths and he takes some deep breaths but we're going to try our best next week to get him out of here and into a facility in in Monta it might be a, a hospice like facility uh, I don't know for sure but that's our next step. We got to get him out of this ICU because they basically told Irina the other day that they're basically done with him. And there's not much more they can do for him. He needs to just go home and be on a respirator. But that's that's the bad news because you, you can't rent one and they're too damn expensive to buy, even if you can even find one here. But anyway. So I'm on my way back to Monta. I checked my mileage when I got here and it looks like even with taking the little bypass, I still, uh, I still, it's about the same miles. It might be a mile or maybe just a tad over a mile more by taking that bypass. So it's, it's a good thing. It seems like it's further, but it, but it's not. When I get home, I'll look and see exactly what the total miles are from point to point. Like I said before, the last time I checked that, it was 60 miles round trip from my apartment to Soka Hospital here and then back, 60 miles even. So 
to see. So I'm, I'm on this loop now that's on the west side or the east, no, west side of Porto Viejo. Thank God to have this because to go through town is it's a real challenge. It's a real challenge to your sanity. I'll see how long I can go before the camera overheats, shuts down again. I think when it shut down on the way over here, I was trying to make a point about this kid driving down the highway on his little motor scooter, dragging his foot on the ground. He just had his feet like just, like just barely touching the ground. I thought it was kind of, well, first place it's kind of stupid. But on the same hand, it's kind of comical because that's just the way they are here. I want to go back to talking about my decision about living here. But a lot of people ask me, you know, what's wrong with Ponta? What's wrong with Ecuador? You know, the things that bother me probably wouldn't bother you. If, if I could just leave Monta and go to the Andes and breathe there comfortably, I would do it in a heartbeat because Cuenca is paradise on earth, in my opinion. I only spent a month there, but I'll tell you what, every single day that I woke up there, I was excited about being alive and being there. It was like, wow, what am I going to do today? You know, because there's so many opportunities, so many things to do in Cuenca, Cuenca all around it. It's a completely different world from Monta. You've heard me say that before, and I'll say it again. You, you can't even compare the people, the culture, the, the infrastructure. It's, everything is different. But it's at 8,300 feet and above sea level. And if you have trouble breathing at that altitude, it's not very comfortable. I don't care how much you like it there. If you feel like you're struggling for every last breath you take, it's not worth it. <laughs> and that's the way I felt. Even after just taking a little uh, shower in the mornings, it's kind of weird because after taking a shower in the mornings, I'd be exhausted and I'd sit down on the edge of my bed and catch my breath. <laughs> that truck moved over, cut that little hot rodder off. But uh, I, I would, I, you know, I'd get up, I'd shower, and walk down to the Tran Via station and catch the train and go to downtown, down to the historical district. I'd walk five blocks over to Sunrise Cafe. Never had a bit of trouble. I'd eat my breakfast and go back down to the Parquet Calderon, sit there and absorb sun and just enjoy the day. You know, so many things to do. And, but then I'd go home and it seemed like when I want to sit down and relax, that's when I had the hardest time breathing. So it's strange. A lot of people say, well, get the cocoa leaves, and there goes that kid on the motorcycle. Just run the red light, asshole. Well, what, what difference does it make? By the way, I don't know if you've heard me say it before, but I'll say it again. 67% of the traffic fatalities in this country are motorcyclists. 67%. In case you didn't know, now you don't. 
if you, when you see the way they drive, you, you don't have any under, you don't have any problem understanding that. Okay, so back to Cuenca and Monta. In Monta, you know, my daily life in Monta is really quite boring. I get up in the morning, I go eat breakfast at the mall. I go to Dulce and Cremoso in the mall, or I go to Dulce and Cremoso at the Quadra, or I go to the new restaurant, Almagro. Almagro. Used to be Pit Coffee, it's nice. It's a nice little family restaurant, good food. Fair prices. You know, and then I either go grocery shopping or I go back home, back to the apartment. And lately, what I've been doing was I go back to the apartment and I've checked email, I check the Facebook groups that I'm managing. I'm managing three Facebook groups here uh, two for Mark Bradbury and one for somebody else. Ecuador Express, I believe it is. And, you know, and I. And then I'll do stuff on my computer. I play around with stuff. I'm always learning new things. I play around with photo editing. And I play around with some programming stuff, chat GPT. You know, I keep myself busy at my desk. And then I lay down on my couch and take a nap. And then I get up and maybe eat a sandwich, have a snack of some type. You know, and then it's getting dark and lately I kind of like sitting out on my balcony with a beer and watch it get dark then I'll get dinner going then I'll watch some TV and then go to bed that's my day you know so Don why don't you go somewhere I you know I, when Stella's here and she's working I help her a lot that gets me out but folks if like I'm not a beach person so I'm, I'm not going to go hang out on the beach it's just not going to happen I'm not going sunbathing on the beach I'm, I don't want any more sunburn in my life I've had enough in my lifetime thank you very much there's no museums no art galleries no you know stuff like that to do amusement parks you know I guess you go shopping. <laughs> I would love to get out and be creative with my camera and take my camera gear out and do some creative photography work. But the problem that I have with that is that I'm afraid. I'm afraid to take my gear. I'm afraid of having it stolen from me, being robbed of it. I don't feel safe. It just doesn't feel good. If I got somebody that I could take with me, that would be great. I would do it. Because it's better to have two people than one. But I don't know anybody in Monta that's interested, even remotely interested in doing photography work. I had one student that wanted to learn and you know we started but we kept running into you know obstacles. There's always an excuse for not being for either one of us for not being able to get together and, and do anything, you know. So the problem that I have with trying to get people interested in photography is that once you find out that there's a little bit of an investment to be made in it, you know, then it's some people lose interest. It costs me ten dollars and eighty five cents a month to use the tools that I use, Photoshop and Lightroom, and a couple of other things that Adobe has. That's it, you know, $10.85 a month. I'm committed to it, I've been doing it since Adobe started their subscription service, which it also explains why it only cost me $10.85, because I guess I'm grandfathered in and I get the original price for life. I think it's like $29 now for new members. I think. I could be wrong about that. Let's look it up. But 
it's, it's, that's what enables me to do the things that I like to do. I have a pretty good, I have a Mac computer at home and I have a 32 inch monitor, a 4K monitor that I work on. And I'm thinking very seriously about uh, printing up some, some photos and maybe seeing, maybe, see about maybe opening up a an art gallery here somewhere. I'd have to find space to rent, you know, and then get the prints printed. I would really like to do a black and white only art gallery and just do nothing but Ecuador, Monta and Ecuador. And, oh man, there's thousands of things to photograph here. Maybe that's what I'll do someday. How much can it cost? In the States, it can cost a lot of money to open up a gallery, an art gallery. And what I would do here is I would try to co-op with other artists. Maybe I could do black and white photography and then color artwork, paintings, and stuff like that. The downside to me doing something like that is that I'd probably create a few enemies because I'm going to be very critical about what's hanging in my gallery. And if I don't like the photograph or the print, I got to tell them that. I got to tell somebody, an artist, that I don't think your piece is good enough to hang in my gallery. And that's going to piss people off. I know it would me, but it's amazing. Maybe I have to take a different tack. It's amazing where I'll post pictures that I think that, wow, this is going to really wow. And I find out that it doesn't really work that way. So, what I think is good, not good to the average viewer. When I did the boat, all the boat pictures that I did at the art show here a couple years ago, there's one picture I absolutely hate. But I posted it anyway because it was kind of interesting. It was two boats, it was color. More people were interested in that picture and not the one that I thought was going to be the big showstopper, you know. And toe boots on the way back. That's it. So it cost me a dollar to go it's open in the back. Yeah, it's just so cheap. I don't even try to put that into the equation. So anyway, if you're a beach person, there's a decent little beach here in Monta. There's other beaches around Monta. San Lorenzo is a beautiful beach. Hardly anybody goes down there because the water's not safe to get in because it's so turbulent, undercurrents, and it gets the full brunt of the Pacific Ocean. And, uh, it's not a good place to go. But it's a beautiful beach to go hang out, picnic, sunbathe, do whatever, you know. I'm sad to say, you know, there's just not that much to do in Monta. Kind of boring to me. Sorry, sorry to have to tell you that. I still say, I tell people, and I'm really getting adamant about this, that if you're planning to come to Ecuador and you want to live especially in Monta you definitely need to do an exploratory trip you definitely need it if you can swing it financially you should do it I've met quite a few people that come here all excited and just get rid of all their stuff sell their house get, sell their car like me and then get here and find out that, wow, this sucks. There's a lot of Monta that's really heavily damaged from the earthquakes and they just never fixed it. There's a lot of growth. There's a lot of new stuff coming up here. A lot of new buildings being built. A lot of apartments being sold. And I'm telling you, another thing too, folks, you're not going to come here and find 
that beachfront apartment for $500 a month. You're not even going to find an ocean view for $500 a month. If you do, you will be lucky. And that's all there is to it. You'll be lucky. I pay $700 a month for my ocean view apartment. The only reason why I get it for $700 a month is because the owner wanted $800 a month, but I prepay six months at a time, so they give me $100 a month off. So I save $600 by, well, actually, I save $1,200 a year by prepaying my rent. I have a fairly decent view, but the apartment's small, it's a two bedroom, two bath. You get more than three or four people in there and it's crowded. My house in Mesa, my condo in Mesa, I can have 20 people in my place. Not be crowded. So anyway, that's about it. I'm going to work on doing some interviews. I think that's a good idea. When I get home today, I'm going to put a plea out on a couple of Facebook pages and ask for our volunteers. And I'll get these interviews for you. And we'll talk to some interesting people. I want to talk to the people from Canada. I want to talk to people uh, that are from the States. I want to talk to people that are planning to go back home because they are here. And there's crows eating up a cat. That was a great sight to see. Poor little kitty cat got hit. But, you know, I'm, I'll interview people that I, I know somebody that's planning to leave. And I'll talk to her. Hopefully she'll be interested in doing uh, the interview. Okay, so that's it for now. I'm going back to Monta. I will talk to you later. Ciao, ciao. Turn my camera back on because I want to show you this highway here. This is that bypass that I've been taking. Look at all the trash. I asked Stella, why don't they send the prisoners out here and pick up all this freaking trash? Of course, you know, the response basically was, they'll escape. <laughs> they'll bribe the guards or who knows what. They will escape. What a shame. It's a filthy, filthy, dirty part of Monta. Which basically talks about a good portion of Monta. People think nothing about just throwing their trash right out the window. They don't think anything of it. It's like, does nobody have any pride at all? Maybe I should just get some big bags of room handle, put a nail on the end of it, and just come out here and start picking it up myself. I wonder what they would do. That's okay, Ecuador. This expat will come clean your country up. Jeez. It's disgusting. It's bad enough that the highway is not well maintained and not properly marked. Yeah, big deal. You got your photo radar here. Well, they marked that up real good. Let's see here. Alright, so now I'm back to Monta. Let's see see what kind of craziness we can see on this trip back into the Sea of Argo. Transito, that's a 
Transit Authority, I guess. No more de una. De una. I guess I think that's. Is he saying, oh boy, is the one? No boy is the one. That would be my first guess. So here they have this, this is the bus terminal right to the left, and these people here, they're just stopping here in the highway because they got to turn left, there's no left turn lane. No left turn lane at all. So they just stop until they had to get clear of traffic, and then they can make their turns, so or everybody else has to stop behind them. No left turn lanes. There's hardly a left turn lane in the city. It's like they designed a city to without 
the thought of cars being there. I guess. That's my guess. <laughs> Let's put paved roads in, but don't give people a place to park. Don't give left turn lanes or right turn lanes. Don't put up a traffic light system. It's this I hate. They put, they put up cones. How about that? The God on my tail. I don't know what that means. They do road work and get and put up cones. I can't believe it. How about that? You don't see that in very many places. Big ship is important, big car carrier. I don't know if you can see it. It's huge, they carry a lot of vehicles. We get at least one a week in here in these big car carriers. If you're looking at this on your phone, you probably can't see the ship. Ways, but look at it on a computer on a big screen, you can see it. This is the Malacon that I'm on, and there is a I don't know if that boat's being launched or looks like one of the newer ones they've just built wooden boat. And I think they build them out of wood here and then they take them down to San Mateo and they fiberglass them down there. I'm not even sure about that. But it's a beautiful boat. It looks like they're getting ready to launch it. Wow, I wish I could go down and take pictures of it. Had my gear here with me, I would. Of course, the tank is going to stop right here. This car right in front of me, this Nissan X Trail that looks like the Rogue, which is what I had back in the States. Nice car. X Trail. He's not gonna let that taxi cut him off. That's about right. Taxi drivers will just muscle their way right in if they can. Yeah, they can get away with it.
<laughs> that was funny. You're not going to cut me off, he says. A lot of traffic here. It's normally not like this. Today is Friday. It's a little after noon. It's 12.45. So now he wants to get back in the left lane. What a... God about it. why all the traffic. I guess I'll find out here in a minute. Can't tell if it's going up to Malacon or if it's going across. If you go straight ahead here it cuts across to the other side to the south side of Monta. I don't know what that road is called but it goes through the containers. Oh now I see what the problem is. They've got the Malacon closed. Wonderful. So the Malacon is closed for whatever reason. No telling why. I had to find my shortcut. Cut through town, I guess. Everybody wants to go that way. I see now. So everybody wants to go that way. So everybody wants to go that way through town. I'm going to go a little bit further up here. 24th Street and go in that way, and I'll just go down 24th Street. What a mess. So I'm cutting through town here, so you can see beautiful downtown Monta. If you want to call it downtown. Don't even know what street I'm on. See all these beautiful buildings, power lines everywhere. People live here. This is where they live. I don't even know what street I'm on. Avenue 20. I want to find 24th Street. 